Space Exploration Technologies Corp., doing business as SpaceX, is a private American aerospace manufacturer and space transportation services company headquartered in Hawthorne, California. It was founded in 2002 by entrepreneur Elon Musk with the goal of reducing space transportation costs and enabling the colonization of Mars. SpaceX has since developed the Falcon launch vehicle family and the Dragon spacecraft family, which both currently deliver payloads into Earth orbit. SpaceX's achievements include the first privately funded liquid propellant rocket to reach orbit Falcon 1 in 2008, the first private company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft Dragon in 2010, the first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station Dragon in 2012, the first propulsive landing for an orbital rocket Rocket Falcon 9 in 2015, the first reuse of an orbital rocket Falcon 9 in 2017, and the first private company to launch an object into orbit around the Sun, Falcon Heavy's payload of a Tesla Roadster in 2018. SpaceX has flown 16 resupply missions to the International Space Station ISS, under a partnership with NASA. NASA also awarded SpaceX a further development contract in 2011 to develop and demonstrate a human-rated Dragon, which would be used to transport astronauts to the ISS and return them safely to Earth. SpaceX conducted the maiden launch of its Crew Dragon spacecraft on a NASA-required demonstration flight on March 2, 2019 and is set to launch its first crewed Crew Dragon later in 2019. On the 11th of March at 8.45 a.m. Est, the SpaceX Crew Dragon completed its first uncrewed flight that splash landed in the Atlantic. The flight named SPX-1 German Mark has demonstrated the Crew Dragon's ability to safely transport crew to ISS and back. SpaceX announced in 2011 that it was beginning a reusable launch system technology development program. In December 2015, the first Falcon 9 was flown back to a landing pad near the launch site, where it successfully accomplished a propulsive vertical landing. This was the first such achievement by a rocket for orbital spaceflight. In April 2016, with the launch of CRS-8, SpaceX successfully vertically landed the first stage on an ocean drone ship landing platform. In May 2016, in another first, SpaceX again landed the first stage, but during a significantly more energetic geostationary transfer orbit mission. In March 2017, SpaceX became the first to successfully relaunch and land the first stage of an orbital rocket. In September 2016, CEO Elon Musk unveiled the mission architecture of the Interplanetary Transport System Program, an ambitious privately funded initiative to develop spaceflight technology for use in crewed interplanetary spaceflight. In 2017, Musk unveiled an updated configuration of the system, now named Starship and Super Heavy, which is planned to be fully reusable and will be the largest rocket ever on its debut, currently scheduled for the early 2020s. Topic. Future In 2001, Elon Musk conceptualized Mars Oasis, a project to land a miniature experimental greenhouse and grow plants on Mars. This would be the furthest that life's ever traveled. 
In an attempt to regain public interest in space exploration and increase the budget of NASA, Musk tried to buy cheap rockets from Russia but returned empty handed after failing to find rockets for an affordable price. On the flight home, Musk realized that he could start a company that could build the affordable rockets he needed. According to early Tesla and SpaceX investor Steve Gervetson, Musk calculated that the raw materials for building a rocket actually were only 3% of the sales price of a rocket at the time. By applying vertical integration, producing around 85% of launch hardware in-house, and the modular approach from software engineering, SpaceX could cut launch price by a factor of 10 and still enjoy a 70% gross margin. In early 2002, Musk was seeking staff for his new space company, soon to be named SpaceX. Musk approached rocket engineer Tom Mueller, later SpaceX's CTO of propulsion, and Mueller agreed to work for Musk, and thus SpaceX was born. SpaceX was first headquartered in a warehouse in El Segundo, California. The company has grown rapidly since it was founded in 2002, growing from 160 employees in November 2005 to 1,100 in 2010, 3,800 employees and contractors by October 2013, nearly 5,000 by late 2015, and about 6,000 in April 2017. As of November 2017, the company had grown to nearly 7,000. In 2016, Musk gave a speech at the International Astronautical Congress, where he explained that the U.S. government regulates rocket technology as an advanced weapon technology, making it difficult to hire non-Americans. As of March 2018, SpaceX had over 100 launches on its manifest representing about $12 billion in contract revenue. The contracts included both commercial and government NASA, DOD, customers. In late 2013, space industry media quoted Musk's comments on SpaceX. Forcing increased competitiveness in the launch industry. Its major competitors in the commercial Comsat launch market being Arian Space, United Launch Alliance, and International Launch Services. At the same time, Musk also said that the increased competition would be a good thing for the future of space. Currently, SpaceX is the leading global commercial launch provider measured by manifested launches. Topic. Goals Musk has stated that one of his goals is to decrease the cost and improve the reliability of access to space, ultimately by a factor of 10. CEO Elon Musk said, I believe $500 per pound $1,100 per kilogram or less is very achievable. A major goal of SpaceX has been to develop a rapidly reusable launch system. As of March 2013, the publicly announced aspects of this technology development effort include an active test campaign of the low-altitude, low-speed grasshopper vertical takeoff, vertical landing VTVL, technology demonstrator rocket, and a high-altitude, high-speed Falcon 9 post-mission booster return test campaign. In 2015, SpaceX successfully landed the first orbital rocket stage on December 21. 
To date, SpaceX has successfully landed 25 boosters, 23 Falcon 9 and 2 Falcon Heavy. In 2017, SpaceX formed a subsidiary, The Boring Company, and began work to construct a short underground test tunnel on and adjacent to the SpaceX headquarters and manufacturing facility, utilizing a small number of SpaceX employees, which was completed in May 2018, and opened to the public in December 2018. During 2018, the Boring Company was spun out into a separate corporate entity with 6% of the equity going to SpaceX, less than 10% to early employees, and the remainder of the equity to Elon Musk. At the 2017 International Astronautical Congress in Adelaide, Australia, Musk announced his plans to build large spaceships to reach Mars. Using the BFR, Musk plans to land at least two uncrewed cargo ships to Mars in 2022. The first missions will be used to seek out sources of water and build a propellant plant. In 2024, Musk plans to fly four additional ships to Mars including the first people. From there, additional missions would work to establish a Mars colony. Musk's advocacy for the long-term settlement of Mars goes far beyond what SpaceX projects to build. A successful colonization would ultimately involve many more economic actors, whether individuals, companies, or governments, to facilitate the growth of the human presence on Mars over many decades. Topic. Achievements Landmark achievements of SpaceX include the first privately funded liquid-fueled rocket to reach orbit, Falcon 1 Flight 4, September 28, 2008. The first privately developed liquid-fueled rocket to put a commercial satellite in orbit, Razixat on Falcon 1 Flight 5, July 14, 2009. The first private company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft, Dragon Capsule on COTS Demo Flight 1, December 9, 2010. The first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station, Dragon C2 Plus, May 25, 2012. The first private company to send a satellite into geosynchronous orbit, SES-8 on Falcon 9 Flight 7, December 3, 2013. The first landing of an orbital rocket's first stage on land, Falcon 9 Flight 20, December 22, 2015. The first landing of an orbital rocket's first stage on an ocean platform, Falcon 9 Flight 23, April 8, 2016. The first relaunch and landing of a used orbital rocket stage B-1021 on Falcon 9 Flight 32, March 30, 2017. The first controlled flyback and recovery of a payload fairing, Falcon 9 Flight 32, March 30, 2017. The first reflight of a commercial cargo spacecraft. Dragon C-106 on CRS-11 mission. June 3, 2017. The first private company to send a human-rated spacecraft to space. Crew Dragon Demo-1 mission, SPX Flight 72 on Falcon 9 Flight 69. March 2, 2019, and the first private company to autonomously dock a spacecraft to the International Space Station, same flight, March 3, 2019. 
Topic: Setbacks. In March 2013, a Dragon spacecraft in orbit developed issues with its thrusters that limited its control capabilities. SpaceX engineers were able to remotely clear the blockages within a short period, and the spacecraft was able to successfully complete its mission to and from the International Space Station. In June 2015, CRS-7 launched a Dragon capsule atop a Falcon 9 to resupply the International Space Station. All telemetry readings were nominal until 2 minutes and 19 seconds into the flight, when a loss of helium pressure was detected and a cloud of vapor appeared outside the second stage. A few seconds after this, the second stage exploded. The first stage continued to fly for a few seconds before disintegrating due to aerodynamic forces. The capsule was thrown off and survived the explosion, transmitting data until it was destroyed on impact. Later it was revealed that the capsule could have landed intact if it had software to deploy its parachutes in case of a launch mishap. The problem was discovered to be a failed two-foot-long steel strut purchased from a supplier to hold a helium pressure vessel that broke free due to the force of acceleration. This caused a breach and allowed high-pressure helium to escape into the low-pressure propellant tank, causing the failure. The Dragon software issue was also fixed in addition to an analysis of the entire program in order to ensure proper abort mechanisms are in place for future rockets and their payload. In September 2016, a Falcon 9 exploded during a propellant fill operation for a standard pre launch static fire test. The payload, the Spacecom Amos 6 communications satellite valued at $200 million, was destroyed. Musk described the event as the most difficult and complex failure ever in SpaceX's history. SpaceX reviewed nearly 3,000 channels of telemetry and video data covering a period of 35 to 55 milliseconds for the post-mortem. Musk reported the explosion was caused by the liquid oxygen that is used as propellant turning so cold that it solidified and it ignited with carbon composite helium vessels. Though not considered an unsuccessful flight, the rocket explosion sent the company into a four-month launch hiatus while it worked out what went wrong, and SpaceX returned to flight in January 2017. Topic. Ownership, funding and valuation In August 2008, SpaceX accepted a $20 million investment from Founders Fund. In early 2012, approximately two-thirds of the company were owned by its founder and his 70 million shares were then estimated to be worth $875 million on private markets, which roughly valued SpaceX at $1.3 billion as of February 2012. After the COTS 2 Plus flight in May 2012, the company private equity valuation nearly doubled to $2.4 billion. In January 2015, SpaceX raised $1 billion in funding from Google and Fidelity, in exchange for 8.333% of the company, establishing the company valuation at approximately $12 billion. Google and Fidelity joined prior investors Draper Fisher Jervetson, Founders Fund, Valor Equity Partners, and Capricorn. 
In July 2017, the company raised $350 million at a valuation of $21 billion. As of May 2012, SpaceX had operated on total funding of approximately $1 billion in its first 10 years of operation. Of this, private equity provided about $200 million, with Musk investing approximately $100 million and other investors having put in about $100 million Founders Fund, Draper Fisher Gervetson. The remainder has come from progress payments on long-term launch contracts and development contracts. By March 2018, SpaceX had contracts for 100 launch missions, and each of those contracts provide down payments at contract signing, plus many are paying progress payments as launch vehicle components are built in advance of mission launch, driven in part by U.S. accounting rules for recognizing long-term revenue. Congressional testimony by SpaceX in 2017 suggested that the NASA Space Act agreement process of setting only a high-level requirement for cargo transport to the space station, while leaving the details to industry, had allowed SpaceX to design and develop the Falcon 9 rocket on its own at substantially lower cost. According to NASA's own independently verified numbers, SpaceX's development costs of both the Falcon 1 and Falcon 9 rockets were estimated at approximately $390 million in total. Quote, in 2011, NASA estimated that it would have cost the agency about $4 billion to develop a rocket like the Falcon 9 booster based upon NASA's traditional contracting processes. The Falcon 9 launch system, with an estimated improvement at least four to ten times over traditional cost plus contracting estimates, about $400 million versus $4 billion in savings through the usage of Space Act agreements. Topic: Spacecraft and flight hardware. SpaceX currently manufactures three broad classes of rocket engine in-house, the kerosene-fueled Merlin engines, the methane-fueled Raptor engines, and the hypergolic-fueled Draco, Super Draco vernier thrusters. The Merlin powers the two main space launch vehicles, the Falcon 9, which flew successfully into orbit on its maiden launch in June 2010 and the Super Heavy class Falcon Heavy, which was launched for the first time on February 6, 2018. SpaceX also manufactures the Dragon, a pressurized orbital spacecraft that is launched on top of a Falcon 9 booster to carry cargo to low Earth orbit, and the follow-on Dragon 2 spacecraft, or Crew Dragon, currently in the process of being human-rated through a variety of design reviews and flight tests that began in 2014. Topic. Rocket engines Since the founding of SpaceX in 2002, the company has developed three families of rocket engines. Merlin and the retired Kestrel for launch vehicle propulsion, and the Draco control thrusters. SpaceX is currently developing two further rocket engines, Super Draco and Raptor. SpaceX is currently the world's most prolific producer of liquid fuel rocket engines. Merlin is a family of rocket engines developed by SpaceX for use on its Falcon rocket family. Merlin engines use LOX and RP-1 as propellants in a gas generator power cycle. 
The Merlin engine was originally designed for sea recovery and reuse. The injector at the heart of Merlin is of the pintle type that was first used in the Apollo program for the lunar module landing engine. Propellants are fed via a single shaft, dual impeller turbopump. Kestrel is a LOX, RP-1 pressure-fed rocket engine, and was used as the Falcon 1 rocket's second stage main engine. It is built around the same Pintle architecture as SpaceX's Merlin engine but does not have a turbo pump, and is fed only by tank pressure. Its nozzle is ablatively cooled in the chamber and throat, is also radiatively cooled, and is fabricated from a high-strength niobium alloy. Both names for the Merlin and Kestrel engines are derived from species of North American falcons, the Kestrel and the Merlin. Draco are hypergolic liquid propellant rocket engines that utilize monomethyl hydrazine fuel and nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. Each Draco thruster generates 400 newtons 90 lbf of thrust. They are used as Reaction Control System RCS, thrusters on the Dragon spacecraft. Super Draco engines are a much more powerful version of the Draco thrusters, which were initially meant to be used as landing and launch escape system engines on the version 2 Dragon spacecraft, Dragon 2. The concept of using retro rockets for landing was scrapped in 2017 when it was decided to perform a traditional parachute descent and splashdown at sea. Raptor is a new family of methane-fueled full-flow staged combustion cycle engines to be used in its future interplanetary transport system. Development versions have been test-fired and fully operational ones are being readied for firing for upcoming Starhopper tests in March to April 2019. Topic. Falcon launch vehicles Since 2010, SpaceX has flown all its missions on the Falcon 9, with one test flight of Falcon Heavy. They previously developed and flew the Falcon 1 Pathfinder vehicle. Falcon 1 was a small rocket capable of placing several hundred kilograms into low Earth orbit. It functioned as an early testbed for developing concepts and components for the larger Falcon 9. Falcon 1 attempted five flights between 2006 and 2009. With Falcon I, when Musk announced his plans for it before a subcommittee in the Senate in 2004, he discussed that Falcon I would be the world's only semi-reusable orbital rocket, apart from the Space Shuttle. On September 28, 2008, on its fourth attempt, the Falcon 1 successfully reached orbit, becoming the first privately funded, liquid fueled rocket to do so. Falcon 9 is an EELV class medium lift vehicle capable of delivering up to 22,800 kilograms pounds) to orbit, and is intended to compete with the Delta IV and the Atlas V rockets, as well as other launch providers around the world. It has nine Merlin engines in its first stage. The Falcon 9 V1.0 rocket successfully reached orbit on its first attempt on June 4, 2010. Its third flight, COTS Demo Flight 2, launched on May 22, 2012, and was the first commercial spacecraft to reach and dock with the International Space Station. The vehicle was upgraded to Falcon 9 V1.1 in 2013 and again in 2015 to the current Falcon 9 full-thrust version. 
As of February 2018, Falcon 9 vehicles have flown 49 successful missions with one failure, the CRS-7 mission. An additional vehicle was destroyed during a routine test several days prior to a scheduled launch in 2016. In 2011, SpaceX began development of the Falcon Heavy, a heavy lift rocket configured using a cluster of three Falcon 9 first stage cores with a total 27 Merlin 1D engines and propellant crossfeed. The Falcon Heavy successfully flew on its inaugural mission on February 6, 2018 with a payload consisting of Musk's personal Tesla Roadster into heliocentric orbit the first stage would be capable of lifting 63,800 kg 140,660 pounds to LEO with the 27 Merlin 1D engines producing 22 2,819 kN of thrust at sea level, and 24,681 kN in space. At the time of its first launch, SpaceX described the Falcon Heavy as the world's most powerful rocket in operation. Topic: Dragon capsules. In 2005, SpaceX announced plans to pursue a human-rated commercial space program through the end of the decade. The Dragon is a conventional blunt cone ballistic capsule which is capable of carrying cargo or up to seven astronauts into orbit and beyond. In 2006, NASA announced that the company was one of two selected to provide crew and cargo resupply demonstration contracts to the ISS under the COTS program. SpaceX demonstrated cargo resupply and eventually crew transportation services using the Dragon. The first flight of a Dragon structural test article took place in June 2010, from Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station during the maiden flight of the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. The mock up Dragon lacked avionics, heat shield, and other key elements normally required of a fully operational spacecraft but contained all the necessary characteristics to validate the flight performance of the launch vehicle. An operational Dragon spacecraft was launched in December 2010 aboard COTS Demo Flight 1, the Falcon 9's second flight, and safely returned to Earth after two orbits, completing all its mission objectives. In 2012, Dragon became the first commercial spacecraft to deliver cargo to the International Space Station, and has since been conducting regular resupply services to the ISS. In April 2011, NASA issued a $75 million contract, as part of its second round commercial crew development program, for SpaceX to develop an integrated launch escape system for Dragon in preparation for human rating it as a crew transport vehicle to the ISS. In August 2012, NASA awarded SpaceX a firm, fixed-price SAA with the objective of producing a detailed design of the entire crew transportation system. This contract includes numerous key technical and certification milestones, an uncrewed flight test, a crewed flight test, and six operational missions following system certification. The fully autonomous Crew Dragon spacecraft is expected to be one of the safest crewed spacecraft systems. 
Reusable in nature, the Crew Dragon will offer savings to NASA. SpaceX plans to launch its Dragon 2 spacecraft on an uncrewed test flight to the ISS in November 2018, and in April 2019, a Crewed Dragon will send U.S. astronauts to the ISS for the first time since the retirement of the Space Shuttle. In February 2017, SpaceX announced that two would be space tourists had put down significant deposits for a mission which would see the two tourists fly on board a Dragon capsule around the Moon and back again. In addition to SpaceX's privately funded plans for an eventual Mars mission, NASA Ames Research Center had developed a concept called Red Dragon, a low-cost Mars mission that would use Falcon Heavy as the launch vehicle and trans-Martian injection vehicle, and the Dragon capsule to enter the Martian atmosphere. The concept was originally envisioned for launch in 2018 as a NASA Discovery mission, then alternatively for 2022 the objectives of the mission would be return the samples from Mars to Earth at a fraction of the cost of the NASA own return sample mission now projected at $6 billion. In September 2017, Elon Musk released first prototype images of the space suits to be used in future missions. The suit is in testing phase and it is designed to cope with two ATM pressure in vacuum. The Crew Dragon spacecraft was first sent to space on March 2, 2019. Topic: <laughs> Research and Development. SpaceX is actively pursuing several different research and development programs. Most notable are those intended to develop reusable launch vehicles, an interplanetary transport system and a global telecommunications network. SpaceX has on occasion developed new engineering development technologies to enable it to pursue its various goals. For example, at the 2015 GPU Technology Conference, SpaceX revealed their own computational fluid dynamics CFD, software to improve the simulation capability of evaluating rocket engine combustion design. Topic. Reusable launch system SpaceX's reusable launcher program was publicly announced in 2011 and the design phase was completed in February 2012. The system returns the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket to a predetermined landing site using only its own propulsion systems. SpaceX's active test program began in late 2012 with testing low altitude, low speed aspects of the landing technology. Grasshopper and the Falcon 9 Reusable Development Vehicles F9R Dev were experimental technology demonstrator reusable rockets that performed vertical takeoffs and landings. High velocity, high altitude aspects of the booster atmospheric return technology began testing in late 2013 and have continued through 2018, with a 98% success rate to date. As a result of Elon Musk's goal of crafting more cost-effective launch vehicles, SpaceX conceived a method to reuse the first stage of the primary rocket, the Falcon 9, by attempting propulsive vertical landings on solid surfaces. Once the company determined that soft landings were feasible by touching down over the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, they began landing attempts on a solid platform. SpaceX leased and modified several barges to sit out at sea as a target for the returning first stage, converting them to autonomous spaceport drone ships ASDS. 
SpaceX first achieved a successful landing and recovery of a first stage in December 2015, and in April 2016, the first stage booster first successfully landed on the ASDS Of course I still love you. SpaceX continues to carry out first stage landings on every orbital launch that fuel margins allow. By October 2016, following the successful landings, SpaceX indicated they were offering the customers a 10% price discount if they choose to fly their payload on a reused Falcon 9 first stage. On March 30, 2017, SpaceX launched a flight proven Falcon 9 for the SES 10 mission. This was the first time a relaunch of a payload carrying orbital rocket went back to space. The first stage was recovered and landed on the ASDS Of course I still love you in the Atlantic Ocean, also making it the first landing of a reused orbital class rocket. Elon Musk called the achievement an incredible milestone in the history of space. Topic. Interplanetary Transport System, BFR SpaceX is developing a super-heavy lift launch system, the BFR. The BFR is a fully reusable first-stage launch vehicle and spacecraft intended to replace all of the company's existing hardware by the early 2020s, ground infrastructure for rapid launch and relaunch, and zero-gravity propellant transfer technology in low Earth orbit LEO. SpaceX initially envisioned the ITS vehicle design which was solely aimed at Mars transit and other interplanetary uses. SpaceX in 2017 began to focus on a vehicle support all SpaceX launch service provider capabilities, Earth orbit, lunar orbit, interplanetary missions, and even intercontinental passenger transport on Earth. Private passenger Yasaku Maizawa has been signed to fly around the moon in the BFR rocket. Musk's long term vision for the company is the development of technology and resources suitable for human colonization on Mars. He has expressed his interest in someday traveling to the planet, stating, I'd like to die on Mars, just not on impact. A rocket every two years or so could provide a base for the people arriving in 2025 after a launch in 2024. According to Steve Jervetson, Musk believes that by 2035 at the latest, there will be thousands of rockets flying a million people to Mars, in order to enable a self-sustaining human colony. Topic. Other projects In January 2015, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced the development of a new satellite constellation to provide global broadband Internet service. In June 2015 the company asked the federal government for permission to begin testing for a project that aims to build a constellation of 4,425 satellites capable of beaming the Internet to the entire globe, including remote regions which currently do not have Internet access. The Internet service would use a constellation of 4,425 cross-linked communications satellites in 1,100 km orbits. Owned and operated by SpaceX, the goal of the business is to increase profitability and cash flow, to allow SpaceX to build its Mars colony. Development began in 2015. Initial prototype test flight satellites were launched on the SpaceX PAS mission in 2017. Initial operation of the constellation could begin as early as 2020. 
As of March 2017, SpaceX filed with the U.S. regulatory authorities plans to field a constellation of an additional 7,518 V-band satellites in non-geosynchronous orbits to provide communications services in an electromagnetic spectrum that had not previously been heavily employed for commercial communications services", called the V-Band Low Earth Orbit constellation. It would consist of 7,518 satellites to follow the earlier proposed 4,425 satellites that would function in CAR and KU band. In February 2019, SpaceX formed a sister company, SpaceX Services, Inc., to license the manufacture and deployment of up to one million fixed satellite Earth stations that will communicate with its Starlink system. In June 2015, SpaceX announced that they would sponsor a Hyperloop competition, and would build a one mile long subscale test track near SpaceX's headquarters for the competitive events. The first competitive event was held at the track in January 2017 and the second in August 2017. And the third in December 2018. Infrastructure <inaudible> 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 SpaceX is headquartered in Hawthorne, California, which also serves as its primary manufacturing plant. The company owns a test site in Texas and operates three launch sites, with another under development. SpaceX also operates regional offices in Redmond, Texas, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. Topic. Headquarters, manufacturing and refurbishment facilities SpaceX headquarters is located in the Los Angeles suburb of Hawthorne, California. The large three-story facility, originally built by Northrop Corporation to build Boeing 747 fuselages, houses SpaceX's office space, mission control, and, as of 2018, all vehicle manufacturing. In March 2018, SpaceX indicated that it would manufacture its next generation, 9 meters 30 feet, diameter launch vehicle, the BFR at a new facility it is building on the Los Angeles waterfront in the San Pedro area. The company has leased an 18-acre site near Berth 240 in the Los Angeles port for 10 years, with multiple renewals possible, and will use the site for manufacturing, recovery from shipborne landings, and refurbishment of both the BFR booster and the BFR spaceship. The area has one of the largest concentrations of aerospace headquarters, facilities, and or subsidiary in the U.S., including Boeing, McDonnell Douglas Main Satellite Building Campuses, Aerospace Corp., Raytheon, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Air Force Space Command Space and Missile Systems Center at Los Angeles Air Force Base, Lockheed Martin, Bay Systems, Northrop Grumman, and AECOM, etc., with a large pool of aerospace engineers and research and college engineering graduates, SpaceX utilizes a high degree of vertical integration in the production of its rockets and rocket engines. SpaceX builds its rocket engines, rocket stages, spacecraft, principal avionics and all software in-house in their Hawthorne facility, which is unusual for the aerospace industry. 
Nevertheless, SpaceX still has over 3,000 suppliers with some 1,100 of those delivering to SpaceX nearly weekly. In June 2017, SpaceX announced they would construct a facility on 0.88 hectares 2.17 acres in Port Canaveral, Florida for refurbishment and storage of previously flown Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boost to cause. Topic. Development and test facilities SpaceX operates the first rocket development and test facility in McGregor, Texas. All SpaceX rocket engines are tested on rocket test stands, and low-altitude VTVL flight testing of the Falcon 9 Grasshopper V1.0 and F9 RDEV-1 test vehicles in 2013-2014 were carried out at McGregor. 2019 low-altitude VTVL testing of the much larger 9-meter diameter Starship test flight rocket is planned to occur at the SpaceX South Texas launch site near Brownsville, Texas, which is currently under construction. On January 23, 2019, strong winds at the Texas test launch site blew over the Starship rocket, causing delays that will take weeks to repair according to SpaceX representatives. The company purchased the McGregor facilities from Beale Aerospace, where it refitted the largest test stand for Falcon 9 engine testing. SpaceX has made a number of improvements to the facility since purchase, and has also extended the acreage by purchasing several pieces of adjacent farmland. In 2011, the company announced plans to upgrade the facility for launch testing a VTVL rocket, and then constructed a half-acre concrete launch facility in 2012 to support the Grasshopper test flight program. As of October 2012, the McGregor facility had seven test stands that are operated 18 hours a day, six days a week and is building more test stands because production is ramping up and the company has a large manifest in the next several years. In addition to routine testing, Dragon capsules following recovery after an orbital mission, a ship to McGregor for defueling, cleanup, and refurbishment for reuse in future missions. Topic. Launch facilities SpaceX currently operates three orbital launch sites, at Cape Canaveral, Vandenberg Air Force Base, and Kennedy Space Center, and is under construction on a fourth in Brownsville, Texas. SpaceX has indicated that they see a niche for each of the four orbital facilities and that they have sufficient launch business to fill each pad. The Vandenberg launch site enables highly inclined orbits 66 to 145 degrees, while Cape Canaveral enables orbits of medium inclination, up to 51.6 degrees. Before it was retired, all Falcon 1 launches took place at the Ronald Reagan Ballistic Missile Defense Test Site on Omlik Island. Topic: <laughs> Cape Canaveral. Cape Canaveral Air Force Station Space Launch Complex 40 SLC-40 is used for Falcon 9 launches to low Earth and geostationary orbits. SLC-40 is not capable of supporting Falcon Heavy launches. 
As part of SpaceX's booster reusability program, the former Launch Complex 13 at Cape Canaveral, now renamed Landing Zone 1, has been designated for use for Falcon 9 first stage booster landings. Topic. Vandenberg Vandenberg Air Force Base Space Launch Complex 4 East SLC-4E is used for payloads to polar orbits. The Vandenberg site can launch both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, but cannot launch to low inclination orbits. The neighboring SLC-4W has been converted to landing zone 4, where SpaceX successfully landed one Falcon 9 first stage booster, in October 2018. <laughs> Kennedy Space Center On April 14, 2014, SpaceX signed a 20-year lease for Launch Pad 39A. The pad was subsequently modified to support Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. SpaceX has launched 13 Falcon 9 missions from Launch Pad 39A and more recently the Falcon Heavy, on February 6, 2018. SpaceX intends to launch the first crewed missions to the ISS from Launch Pad 39A in 2019. Topic: Brownsville. In August 2014, SpaceX announced they would be building a commercial-only launch facility at Brownsville, Texas. The Federal Aviation Administration released a draft environmental impact statement for the proposed Texas facility in April 2013, and found that no impacts would occur that would force the Federal Aviation Administration to deny SpaceX a permit for rocket operations, and issued the permit in July 2014. SpaceX started construction on the new launch facility in 2014 with production ramping up in the latter half of 2015, with the first suborbital launches from the facility in 2019. Real estate packages at the location have been named by SpaceX with names based on the theme, Mars Crossing. Topic. Satellite Prototyping Facility In January 2015, SpaceX announced it would be entering the satellite production business and global satellite internet business. The first satellite facility is a 30,000 square foot, 2,800 square meters office building located in Redmond, Washington. As of January 2017, a second facility in Redmond was acquired with 40,625 square feet, 3,800 square meters, and has become a research and development lab for the satellites. In July 2016, SpaceX acquired an additional 740 square meters, 8,000 square feet, creative space in Irvine, California, Orange County, to focus on satellite communications. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Launch contracts. SpaceX won demonstration and actual supply contracts from NASA for the International Space Station ISS, with technology the company developed. SpaceX is also certified for U.S. military launches of Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Class EELV, payloads. 
with approximately 30 missions on manifest for 2018 alone, SpaceX represents over $12 billion under contract. Topic: NASA contracts. Topic: COTS. In 2006, NASA announced that SpaceX had won a NASA Commercial Orbital Transportation Services COTS Phase 1 contract to demonstrate cargo delivery to the ISS, with a possible contract option for crew transport. This contract, designed by NASA to provide seed money, through Space Act agreements for developing new capabilities, NASA paid SpaceX $396 million to develop the cargo configuration of the Dragon spacecraft, while SpaceX self invested more than $500 million to develop the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. These Space Act agreements have been shown to have saved NASA millions of dollars in development costs, making rocket development approximately four to ten times cheaper than if produced by NASA alone. In December 2010, the launch of the COTS Demo Flight 1 mission, SpaceX became the first private company to successfully launch, orbit and recover a spacecraft. Dragon was successfully deployed into orbit, circled the Earth twice, and then made a controlled re-entry burn for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. With Dragon's safe recovery, SpaceX became the first private company to launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft. Prior to this mission, only government agencies had been able to recover orbital spacecraft. COTS Demo Flight 2 launched in May 2012, in which Dragon successfully berthed with the ISS, marking the first time that a private spacecraft had accomplished this feat. Topic. Commercial cargo Commercial Resupply Services CRS, are a series of contracts awarded by NASA from 2008 to 2016 for delivery of cargo and supplies to the ISS on commercially operated spacecraft. The first CRS contracts were signed in 2008 and awarded $1.6 billion to SpaceX for 12 cargo transport missions, covering deliveries to 2016. SpaceX CRS-1, the first of the 12 planned resupply missions, launched in October 2012, achieved orbit, berthed and remained on station for 20 days, before re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. CRS missions have flown approximately twice a year to the ISS since then. In 2015, NASA extended the Phase 1 contracts by ordering an additional three resupply flights from SpaceX. After further extensions late in 2015, SpaceX is currently scheduled to fly a total of 20 missions. A second phase of contracts, known as CRS-2, was solicited and proposed in 2014. They were awarded in January 2016, for cargo transport flights beginning in 2019 and expected to last through 2024. Topic. Commercial crew The Commercial Crew Development CCDEV, program intends to develop commercially operated spacecraft that are capable of delivering astronauts to the ISS. 
SpaceX did not win a Space Act agreement in the first round CCDEV1, but during the second round CCDEV2, NASA awarded SpaceX with a contract worth $75 million to further develop their launch escape system, test a crew accommodations mock-up, and to further progress the Falcon Dragon crew transportation design. The CCDEV program later became Commercial Crew Integrated Capability CACAP, and in August 2012, NASA announced that SpaceX had been awarded $440 million to continue development and testing of its Dragon 2 spacecraft. In September 2014, NASA chose SpaceX and Boeing as the two companies that will be funded to develop systems to transport transport U.S. crews to and from the ISS. SpaceX won $2.6 billion to complete and certify Dragon 2 by 2017. The contracts include at least one crewed flight test with at least one NASA astronaut aboard. Once Crew Dragon achieves NASA certification, the contract requires SpaceX to conduct at least two, and as many as six, crewed missions to the space station. In early 2017, SpaceX was awarded four additional crewed missions to the ISS from NASA to shuttle astronauts back and forth. Topic. U.S. defense contracts In 2005, SpaceX announced that it had been awarded an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity IDIQ contract for responsive small spacelift RSS launch services by the United States Air Force, which could allow the Air Force to purchase up to $100 million worth of launches from the company. In April 2008, NASA announced that it had awarded an IDIQ launch services contract to SpaceX for up to $1 billion, depending on the number of missions awarded. The contract covers launch services ordered by June 2010, for launches through December 2012. Musk stated in the same 2008 announcement that SpaceX has sold 14 contracts for flights on the various Falcon vehicles. In December 2012, SpaceX announced its first two launch contracts with the United States Department of Defense. The United States Air Force Space and Missile Systems Center awarded SpaceX two EELV class missions, Deep Space Climate Observatory and Space Test Program 2 DSCOVR was launched on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle in 2015, while STP 2 will be launched on a Falcon Heavy in 2019. In May 2015, the United States Air Force announced that the Falcon 9 V1.1 was certified for launching National Security Space Missions which allows SpaceX to contract launch services to the Air Force for any payloads classified under national security. This broke the monopoly held since 2006 by ULA over the U.S. Air Force launches of classified payloads. In April 2016, the U.S. Air Force awarded the first such national security launch, an $82.7 million contract to SpaceX to launch the second GPS 3 satellite in May 2018. This estimated cost was approximately 40% less than the estimated cost for similar previous missions. Prior to this, United Launch Alliance was the only provider certified to launch national security payloads. 
ULA did not submit a bid for the May 2018 launch. In 2016, the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office said it had purchased launches from SpaceX. The first, for NROL 76, took place on 1 May 2017. In March 2017, SpaceX won versus ULA with a bid of $96.5 million for the third GPS 3 launch. Due February 2019. In March 2018, SpaceX secured an additional $290 million contract from the U.S. Air Force to launch three next generation GPS satellites, known as GPS 3. The first of these launches is expected to take place in March 2020. In February 2019, SpaceX secured a $297 million contract from the U.S. Air Force to launch three national security missions, including AFSPC-44, NROL-87, and NROL-85, all slated to launch NET-FY 2021. Topic. International contracts Topic. Kazakhstan SpaceX won a contract to launch two Kazakhstan satellites aboard the Falcon 9 launch rocket on a rideshare with other satellites. The takeoff was scheduled for November 19, 2018. According to the Kazakh Defense and Aerospace Ministry, the launch from SpaceX would cost the country $1.3 million. The two small satellites are named Kazzysat and Kazishtisat. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Launch market competition and pricing pressure. SpaceX's low launch prices, especially for communication satellites flying to geostationary GTO orbit, have resulted in market pressure on its competitors to lower their own prices. Prior to 2013, the openly competed Comsat launch market had been dominated by Ariane Space flying Ariane 5 and International Launch Services flying Proton. With a published price of $56.5 million per launch to low Earth orbit, Falcon 9 rockets were already the cheapest in the industry. Reusable Falcon 9s could drop the price by an order of magnitude, sparking more space-based enterprise, which in turn would drop the cost of access to space still further through economies of scale. SpaceX has publicly indicated that if they are successful with developing the reusable technology, launch prices in the $5 to $7 million range for the reusable Falcon 9 are possible. In 2014, SpaceX had won nine contracts out of 20 that were openly competed worldwide in 2014 at commercial launch service providers. Space Media reported that SpaceX had already begun to take market share from Arian Space. Arian Space has requested that European governments provide additional subsidies to face the competition from SpaceX. European satellite operators are pushing the ESA to reduce Ariane 5 and the future Ariane 6 rocket launch prices as a result of competition from SpaceX. According to one Ariane Space Managing Director in 2015, it was clear that a very significant challenge was coming from SpaceX. Therefore things have to change and the whole European industry is being restructured, consolidated, rationalized and streamlined. 
Jean Botti, director of innovation for Airbus, which makes the Ariane 5, warned that those who don't take Elon Musk seriously will have a lot to worry about. In 2014, no commercial launches were booked to fly on the Russian Proton rocket. Also in 2014, SpaceX capabilities and pricing began to affect the market for launch of U.S. military payloads. For nearly a decade the large U.S. launch provider United Launch Alliance ULA had faced no competition for military launches. Without this competition, launch costs by the U.S. provider rose to over $400 million. The ULA monopoly ended when SpaceX began to compete for national security launches. At a side-by-side -side comparison, SpaceX's launch costs for commercial missions are considerably lower at $62 million. In 2015, anticipating a slump in domestic military and spy launches, ULA stated that it would go out of business unless it won commercial satellite launch orders. To that end, ULA announced a major restructuring of processes and workforce in order to decrease launch costs by half. In 2017, SpaceX had 45% global market share for awarded commercial launch contracts. The estimate for 2018 is about 65% as of July 2018. On January 11, 2019, SpaceX issued a statement and announcing it will lay off 10% of its workforce, in order to help finance the Starship and Starlink projects. <laughs> See also